In this video, we're going to learn about diffraction and waves. In wave diagrams, you're going to see these solid lines which represent the fronts of waves. And diffraction is when one of those waves passes through a barrier and actually begins to bend and spread out. But let's look at some facts about waves to start with. First crucial things you need to know about waves as they're entering the barrier. All waves have a wavelength. This is the distance between two consecutive crests, that might be the top of the wave and the top of the wave, or it might be between the bottom of the wave and the bottom of the next wave. So that's the wavelength, and this symbol lambda, it's a Greek symbol, represents wavelength in the formula. So you're going to need to remember that one. The next thing is that all waves have a velocity, they're actually travelling in a certain direction. So velocity is how fast they're travelling in a certain direction, and that will always be shown to you, or should be shown to you. The last thing you need to know is the frequency. Now the frequency is related to both of these. That's how many waves passes a point in a certain number of seconds. So if waves had a frequency of 100, it would mean 100 waves would need to go past you every second. Or if you had a frequency of 0.2, that would mean 0.2 of a wave would pass you every second. Or it would take you 5 seconds for the whole wave to go past you. So these three things can be related together in a formula. Now this is a really common formula and it's crucial you know it because it will pop up all throughout the wave's topic. That is that the velocity of the wave equals the frequency of the wave multiplied by the wavelength. Now to get on to how that relates to diffraction. Now diffraction is that when we have a wave coming towards some kind of gap or barrier and it passes through this gap, the waves actually spread out. Diffraction, therefore, by definition, is the bending of waves as they pass obstacles in their path. So in each of these pictures, you can see the waves down the bottom here, moving towards this gap here, that's an obstacle on either side of the gap, and they're bending around each obstacle in its path, or bending throughout the gap. Now moving forward with this definition, here we might have a much, much bigger gap size and the same waves coming towards it with the same velocity, the same frequency, and the same wavelength. And these ones bend a little bit less. They remain mostly straight in the middle, but they will curve around the barrier that they've seen. Now, if we had a very small barrier like last time, you just see almost a big rainbow effect. Whereas if the barrier is very, very large, you only see some curvature at the end. But... That is the fraction. It bends as it passes around an obstacle. So the key next point you need to know is that waves diffract the most when the wavelength, that's the distance between two waves, is similar to the gap size. Now in this example right here, the gap size is much, much bigger than the wavelength. Therefore, it does not diffract as much. We only have some diffraction at each end of each wave front. Whereas in the previous example, when there was a much smaller gap size, which was close to the wavelength, we saw much bigger diffraction effects. Now, again, in the same way, we don't even need to have a gap. You simply might have one barrier, the wave will go up past that barrier, and the waves will still diffract around that obstacle. Now, it will stay straight as it moves forward, but we will have some bending around whatever obstacle is in the path of the waves. So you need to take away several things from this video. The first of which is this formula here that the velocity equals the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. Now you need to know that V is the symbol for velocity on your formula sheet, and that's measured in meters per second. You've got to know that F is the symbol for frequency and is measured in hertz. And lambda, this Greek symbol here, means wavelength, and that's measured in meters. The next thing that you must know is the definition for diffraction, because diffraction is the bending of waves as they pass around obstacles in their path. Now here we can see three different effects of diffraction as they pass around different types of barriers. In this top example here, you can see that the gap size is similar to the wavelength. So we see large extents of diffraction, which is the third point you need to take home. However, when the gap size is much larger than the wavelength, we don't see such an exaggerated diffraction effect. We only see some bending around the edges that passes around a barrier. And in the same way, if there's no gap, there's just a single barrier, waves still diffract around that obstacle. But again, it's not a massive effect. Now the reason I emphasize the second one, the definition of diffraction, is because they'll often ask you to define a phenomenon which is happening when they show you a photo of diffraction. So if you can say, this is diffraction, 
which is the bending of waves as they pass around obstacles in their path, you've nailed that type of question. So let's look at what a type of question that you might have to answer in a slightly more complicated way. Here we have a radio tower sitting on top of a cliff and we have a boat on the water down below that wants to get a signal from the radio tower. Explain how it is still possible to get a radio signal when the boat is not in direct view of the tower. There's a cliff that's sitting in the way. And the reason, you might have guessed, is because of diffraction. So here the tower gives off the radio waves which go in all directions, including some out to the left here. Now the cliff is a barrier that's in between the boat and the radio tower. And because waves have encountered a barrier, they're going to diffract around it. And because waves diffract around the cliff, they get bent enough that they reach the boat. And that allows the boat to pick up a signal. And that is how diffraction occurs. So hopefully you can take away how the idea of diffraction, waves bending around a barrier in their path, relates to situations such as these.